Hey guys, what's happening? So, I have an issue with my wife's uh, SRX, Cadillac SRX. It's a 2016, but the uh, AC is intermittent. So it kicks on sometimes, cool air, and then it doesn't kick on. So, um, I guess I've been messing with AC systems for about 20 years. I'm not an AC mechanic, I'm actually an IT guy. So there's usually a couple different things that go wrong with AC system. It's usually either the uh, fluent, the refrigerant, the compressor is not kicking on, compressor clutch, or a seized up compressor. Uh, also, sometimes the uh, condenser cooling fan uh, won't kick on, but this is a single, looks like a single fan in this car. So, yeah, I don't see like a secondary fan for like uh, cooling the condenser up here. You can see the condenser right there. Um, but it's kind of, like I said, it's intermittent, it works. It'll, it'll kick on and kick off and so I don't know what's up with this thing yet so far. Just the first time I've looked at, it, looked at it. So I went to AutoZone and got this. But I do actually have a better tool that I've used to troubleshoot. It connects the high pressure side and the low pressure side. Uh, most of these things actually here connect to the low pressure side. Um, that way I can actually look at both sides. So I'm gonna hook this up and I'm gonna turn AC on full and uh, I need to figure out which side is what. So. So it looks like I, on this car, I took the little thing off here, rubber. There's no other like, thing there. Okay. What does it say? Okay. Guessing that's low pressure and this is high pressure. Well, I don't know. All right. I'm gonna get some. I'm gonna blow that on my air compressor because you don't want to get that stuff inside your lines. Okay, so I got connected. That side looks pretty good. And this is the side you'd normally fill a can up on in here. So, um, this thing will not, this usually won't go down until the compressor kicks in. So, let's fire this up. I'm bring this all down as far as I can go. Low. This thing run. Yeah, because sometimes if the pressure is too low, the compressor won't kick on. Yeah, it's no cool air coming out right now. I don't hear the compressor kicking on. Yeah, I mean, that could be a lot of different things, though. I mean, it could be like a clogged uh, filter. You know, the... Yeah, because typically what will happen is the compressor will kick on and it should kick on the fan to cool out the condenser if you're not driving. All right, so the compressor kicked in right now. And you can see the uh, high pressure went down in green full. Well, and it's probably blowing cool air, but like I said, it's intermittent, it doesn't stay on, so. See the slow goes up. Fan kicks in. We'll kick in a second. Hear the fan kick in? So that just cooling off the condenser and brings it down. Yeah, I feel like it's like the expansion valve. Like there's some kind of clog in the system. Yeah, because this is actually not cold. Obviously the return, the high pressure side is hot, but the return side is, is not cold. That should be cold to feed back into the actual uh, evaporator. Okay. Yeah, because the fan hasn't kicked in yet. And look at that pressure, super high pressure. Another thing I noticed too, finally the fan just kicked on. So it's, at max AC, this fan should be, you know, the, the fan should be on all the time, you know? So now we're back in the original, you know, you know cool off the actual uh, gases. 
we've cooled off the actual uh, refrigerant. Now we're expanding again. I had a similar issue with my Lincoln MKX, um, where actually the AC system was fine, but the cooling fans wouldn't kick on. So I, now I'm on, I'm on max AC, max cool, max fan. So the AC fan should be on 24/7 right now. It shouldn't be off right now. And the only time the actually the fan is kicking on is actually uh, when it's trying to cool off the car, the radiator. So, um, all right, see the fan just kick on again. That's not the AC fan. That's actually the uh, fan to cool off the actual radiator. So, so like I said, I had this issue before with my Lincoln MKX, and it was a dual pulse width modulated controlled fan. And so it actually had two inputs, one for the AC and one for the actual uh, the radiator cooling fan. So the, the fan was controlled by two different sources, right? Like with two different relays. So, but the actual AC side wouldn't actually work, but the actual, just like this, the way it seems like right now, the fan's not kicking on. So I feel like, um, because it actually gets cool when you're driving. So when you're driving on, a, on the freeway, right, and it actually seems like it starts to work a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, it's getting adequate airflow, so it's going, right? But at idle, I'm not getting any sort of, like, a fan on, so... It could be a couple different things. Like, on this car, there's actually a high-speed and low-speed fan, and it's kind of like my Belkin conversion, but you have a high-speed and low-speed. So it's a two-speed fan, and uh, there's two fuses and, and two relays. But then there's also, like, these control modules in there. I'm trying to figure out what those do. But yeah, I, I definitely think it's because the fan is not kicking on. So, um, especially at idle, you know, I got the thing that's not working, you're not getting cold air. You're, you're just overheating your condenser. So I gotta figure out if it's not being commanded by the AC system, the ECM, the computer's not sending the signal out to the fan or the fan itself has issues. Like maybe only one, only one of the options is working, the high speed versus low speed. Um, you yeah, know, because it doesn't need high speed just to you know, idle, cool off the engine idle, right? So it's possible that one of these functions doesn't work. Either, I'm assuming high speed probably doesn't work. Yeah, so this actually came out of the fan. That's a model I pulled out. Look at that, that looks like a big coil. I'm not sure if it's a resistor or what it is. Um, like a thermistor, you know? I'm gonna hook my multimeter up and test it. So I'm just gonna start working the fan back. So I pulled out one of the modules and I have my continuity tester on it. So I have one in the uh, white side, the feed wire. And I'm testing for continuity. That side. Okay, so I know that coil is, has continuity from both sides. I think that module is probably fine. So I'm assuming the power is sent through from the ECM, from the relay, through here back to the fan. And that's providing power to the fan, the two stage fans. So you have two modules, you have one here, one on the other side. And that's providing high speed and low speed. So you gotta figure out if it's being commanded. All right, so that is, I think, fuse or uh, relay nine is in relay. It's cooling fan two. So cooling fan two is on that side. I go to the relay box. So that is the source of the fan. And that would be on the relay. And that should be a 12 volt pump, most likely. Uh, well, it'll be activated by the relay here. So that's when I'm, they'll go back and... Oh, I'll take that off, I'll make it verify. All right, so if you're not, I'm gonna test both these actual, uh, just as a precaution. Um, so I actually have my uh, 12 volt power supply here on my bench, multimeter, multimeter going to my continuity, and my energizer coil with uh, 14 volts, giving me from 12 to 14 volts, like a running car. Hear the beep, so I know that thing is working correctly. All right, I can hear it clicking. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one. All right, pretty cool. I was able to find the actual dealer software, the GDS2 on the internet. And actually I was able to use my old uh, VCM clone, the Ford one, uh, which was based on the VX Nano, as a, I think it's like a J230 something pass-through. Um, but actually it works the dealer software, so I'm able to actually test the fans. You know, fan one, fan two, fan three. Um, so yeah, all the fans work. Um, but let me, uh, 
So, yeah, it's not a fan issue because I'm able to control three different relays. Uh, let me turn those off. So I'm still trying to learn, I'm still learning the software. I mean, it's, look, look how, like, it's so, <laughs> like, outdated and elementary right now. Um, okay, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So I can test those sensors. I thought I saw, like, an HVAC test, too. Alright, so, um, not EVAP. Alright, so I'm going to go through here. I'm going to try to find how to do a, um, AC completter. Okay, let's see that one. Okay, AC clutch. I already know the AC clutch is actually working. I know it's actually the cooling fan's not going on. Even though I actually had the AC on full. Um, Alright, so I have max fan on. And if I got back. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I mean, it's definitely cool, but it's not very graphical. It's, uh, I should have the relay. It should still be active. I mean, I just checked with my flashlight. It's a relay still on. So, I'm pumping uh, fluid here. Or coolant. Um, yeah, it's not called Freon anymore. Um, okay, and these are both off now. It feels like it's blowing some cold air, but I'm going to turn these back on, actually. Max. Max fan. I'm going to let this run for a while with max fan and see if I can blow any cool air. I mean, it, it's possible this thing's just low on, low on uh, refrigerant. I'm going to hook my uh, gauges back up, see what's up. Alright, so it's been a couple weeks, and the issue is still intermittent. So, it made me, I started looking at wiring diagrams, and maybe started thinking like, okay, so what I know is the fan, actually the fans work, and the AC compressor clutch works, and the AC system works, it's just not cooling off the uh, condenser when it builds up pressure. So I thought, maybe, it could be this. The high pressure uh, sensor, maybe this thing's intermittent. Um... You know, it's not telling the fan, like, if it's not picking up the correct reading, it's not going to tell the fan to turn on. So, uh, I'm going to get this shot. It was like 40 bucks at uh, AutoZone. You get them on Amazon for 20 bucks. I'll put a link down below. I only want 20. Um, I just actually had credit at AutoZone, so. But yeah, so now i got to figure out where this thing's at. I mean, I did a quick look through and I haven't found it yet, but on some of these, these cars, these, you know, GM cars, they're on the condenser which is under the bumper, so I'm hoping that's not the case for this car because that's going to be a nightmare, but alright, so i got to figure that out and uh, but yeah, it kind of makes logical sense if you think about it you know, if the, the pressure sensor is not getting the right, right reading, it's not going to tell the fan it could gone so, I don't know alright, so take a look at my computer screen here see that right there? I mean, that's not looking good, I think it's attached right to the condenser Okay, this comes off the compressor. Let me give it another picture of it. God, that's going to be a nightmare. Alright, so here is the condenser. I think this attaches to the condenser, or I mean the, the compressor. And that's a condenser, but then I think this attaches to one side of the compressor, the other one. Um, God, that's going to be a nightmare to get to. I'm going to have to take the whole bumper thing apart to give me, get to the, or to give me access to it. Hopefully this video is going to save somebody a lot of trouble if you have an SRX. Let me show you where it's at. So at first I thought I could get to it from over here. Take that panel off. So I didn't really need to take this off, I don't think. I just needed to take off the top cover. But I'm able to get to it. And hopefully you can see that in there. There it is. Hopefully you can see that little switch right there. Hopefully it's on a Schrader valve so it's not going to totally depressurize the whole system. Well, that's how I'm going to try that and give it a go. But yeah, headache to get to. It's not an easy part to, I mean, it's not horrible, but, you know, you got to take, you got to pull your grill up. Alright, so when I just first pulled this thing up, I noticed that this thing actually has a, you can see it, I hope I can get in position where you can see it. That corrode, that, the connector looks corroded. So, like, water got in there. The wire itself behind looks fine. Uh, yeah, look at that. That's the issue. It's just a corroded connector. Yeah, because it was intermittent. So, um, wow. Alright, so take a look at it. I hope you can see that. Maybe. I don't know. 
one of the pins is broken off, corroded and broken off, and it's still inside the connector. So that's going to be a nightmare to get out of there. Hopefully I can maybe back, back uh, fish it with a, like a little pin or something. Uh, but yeah, it's stuck inside the connector. So I'm actually running my little deoxit. I'll do another video about that, but um, the stuff I use for my electronics, you know, I'm testing electronics and sensors. So I put that in there. But uh, yeah, there's no, obviously no salvaging the sensor. Yeah, the cool thing is at least it's on a Schrader valve. So, like I said, it pops off and doesn't decharge the whole system. All right, it's running. Clean the connector up a lot. I mean, I really should replace the connector, but the AC fan is turned off at idle, on and off, uh, to cool off the condenser. So, um, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, I really should replace that connector. It's pretty bad, the terminal. Right, but even though I got that thing actually working, the connector, um, you know, I, I don't feel confident because it's so corroded. That's gonna be a long, I mean, it's might be a headache again. So, got an air pigtail that should work. I'm gonna solder that on there, shrink wrap it. And uh, yeah, there, there must be a reason why the, the water got here in the beginning. So, maybe it's not sealing up correct, but. Yeah, I don't want to come back down here in like another month or two, two months, who knows. All right, hopefully you can see that. So the only way to really truly fix one of these things correctly is to solder and shrink wrap it. Yeah, but you have to remember you're in an area where you're going to get lots of water when it rains. It's going to come right through that grill right on those wires. So that's why I suspect that's what happened originally. I don't know why it leaked through, but... Nice new clean connector and new pressure switch. Alright, so I'm running this thing at full AC. Fans kicked in. Good fan speed. Um, one of the issues I had is that because it wasn't cooling off and I was getting over pressure on the high side, it degassed some of the uh, coolant. So now I'm actually running a little bit low. So I'm going to put a uh, small can in there. So, looking pretty good, blowing some cool air here. Um, yeah, so it was a funny, it was a, it was a few different issues. Um, so what happened was, the since the AC uh, switch wasn't kicking on, it basically was creating a high pressure, pressure situation, um, which then would degas, you know, on the, on the high pressure side, it would degas the high pressure side, creating a low freon situation. So, yeah, the main thing is, like I said, if that fan is not running idle, you're not going to be blowing, you're not going to be cooling off the condenser, and that alone is going to create a high-pressure situation. So, yeah, that one little connector, that one corroded connector, um, where water got into it, I'm not sure what happened to it, but created this whole situation. So, but if you have an SRX, you know where it's at now. <laughs> it's down in the front of the car. So, uh, but I was able to get it without having to take the whole grill off, you know, so that's, which is pretty cool. But hopefully this video helps somebody, you know, if you're having the same issue, or even any Cadillac, I guess, but... Um, Alright, so what are like, 40 in the sensor, and... 40 at AutoZone, and I think I've seen 20 on, on Amazon. Put a link down below, we can get the sensor on Amazon. And the pigtail, too. So the pigtail was 25 at AutoZone, you know, on 10 on Amazon. I, I had to get this car done for tomorrow, so I would have normally got the stuff on Amazon. Um, and then probably about... Um, you know, the R134A, which seems to be way more expensive in California. Uh, so in other states, it seems like it's $10 a can. This one was 14 plus a core charge of $10, which is crazy. But, um, all right, guys, cool. That's how I fixed it. All right, awesome.